So one of the really big things is that, uh, and you've probably heard about it, um, carbohydrate loading, okay? And look, uh, carbohydrate loading is a little bit, uh, it really came out of sort of the, the 80s era with the marathon runners and nutrition and strategies weren't sort of really thought out and the guys couldn't carry products on them in those days and they used to, you know, run along and then a few hours into the marathon they hit the wall, all right? Um, but nowadays we've got fantastic nutritional products and cycling is a little bit different to running in that we can carry obviously water on our bikes, we can carry food in our pockets, all right? So the chances are less of that happening. But carbohydrate loading, you know, like if we define it as being, you know, um, increasing the amount of glycogen or carbohydrate that we can store on our body to increase that window of that hour 20, two hours of riding, that's what carbohydrate loading, you know, that's what I define carbohydrate loading as. And it's kind of a little bit old school. Generally, we, we work more towards what we call metabolic efficiency. Okay, so the, what, we, what we do with metabolic efficiency is that we work on improving the, the burn ratio. So at high intensities, we're actually burning less carbohydrate and more fat, all right? So we're extending the curves, all right? So what we're doing is training the body to run at higher intensities, burning more fat to carbohydrate, all right? So by doing that, um, we become more metabolically efficient, and it means that we're less reliant on having to substitute uh, carbohydrate into that. Now, it's a process not like carbohydrate, it's similar to carbohydrate loading, but it's a process that we do over a sort of a six week period. And how we do that is that we work on uh, ensuring that the riders go out and ride on more of a low GI type um, carbohydrate when they're out training. Okay, so they would be more relying on, um, uh, you know, sports bars and uh, bananas and those sort of things that are sort of low GI type carbohydrates rather than fueling up with high GI carbohydrates like gels and sports drinks. Now for the, for the longer rides it's important that, um, that they would run on low GI type carbohydrates. And one of the other things that we do is on the shorter rides, and this is really important that we only do this for the shorter rides, so any ride less than two hours we will get the athlete to go out there and ride on an empty stomach. Um, and and try and resist the urge of eating anything throughout, throughout that ride. Now it's very important that you don't do this for those longer rides that you would generally do on the weekend. We generally reserve this to the shorter rides that you do during the week. Um, and of course, you know, if you start feeling faint or lightheaded or your vision starts getting blurry, then it's very, very important that you do eat something. All right, so, so don't go too crazy with it. But those sort of techniques help improve the um, metabolic efficiency because what it's doing is it's helping improve the ability, your body's ability to be able to burn more fat to carbohydrate um, while you're out training. And then obviously when you do the event, you're burning more fat to carbohydrate. All right, so that's how we shift the curve. If you are interested in finding out anything more about our training or coaching services, then certainly jump on our website and visit Cycling Inform. Uh, great information on the website, have a look around. Uh, you can contact us with any questions that you may have about the program, training in general, nutrition, hydration,